Now, probably everybody's worried here. Is he going to speak about all the Ten Commandments? I think we're going to basically take uh, the Ten Commandments as the whole. I will preach again during my uh, service or sermon. And uh, but uh, I loved the movie The Ten Commandments. If anybody had shown in a movie the wisdom of the Ten Commandments, it was in that movie. Probably one of the saddest scenes. I believe in the whole movie was uh, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and he broke the tablets, he saw the people worshiping the golden calf. I mean, after all he did for them, and here they were worshiping a golden calf. And uh, we know that uh, Moses was upset, and we know the Lord God was probably even more upset. That's why it took 40 years for them to go uh, to the promised land because they kept sinning. They did not learn to follow the Ten Commandments. Do you remember the days when a teacher could lay the Bible on her desk in a classroom and he could then could refer to it from time to time for wisdom and for knowledge for the children? Do you remember the day that in the schoolhouse the Ten Commandments was on the wall? Now, you know, that doesn't happen anymore, does it? How sad in public schools, in many public schools, there's not even a Bible in the library. And I find that even sadder. One of the shortcomings of Christianity is its ineffectiveness at teaching the wisdom of God's laws found in the Ten Commandments. How sad God's laws are important to our falling society. Can a society exist without following the Ten Commandments? No way. I say it with emphatically, no way can our society exist without following the Ten Commandments. God's motives for mankind were based on authority of his love and for the survival of mankind. And I appreciate God making that uh, true, that he did it out of love. He's not the cosmic killjoy. He loves us and he wants us to follow his commands so that he can bless us and our lives will be blessed by following the Ten Commandments. A teacher in a public school can't even recite John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And many teachers know if they quote that scripture, they will first face the school board, then they will might even face the judge and even a jury. How sad for quoting the most famous scripture, the heart of the Bible, John 3.16. What a mistake of unfathomable fact in our attempt to run away from God's given Ten Commandments. God's laws and Christ's teachings not only can give us eternal life, but they can, by obeying the Ten Commandments, we can have the abundant life, as Jesus has said, I have come to have, give you life abundantly. And it cannot happen if we don't follow the Ten Commandments. Yes, a life of flourishing, prosperity, and family that is honorable in the eyes of God are a family that do follow the Ten Commandments. These precepts are set forth in the Ten Commandments given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai to give us peace and a loving society. They were good enough for the Israelites, and of course, if ever we need the Ten Commandments, we need them now in our today's society. First and foremost, we are to worship our one true God. God, and not worship the many pagan gods that were popular in the Middle East. 
how sad there were so many false gods and cultures <coughs> which surrounded the Israelites. All the rest of the commandments are so important that we worship the Lord our God and have no graven image. We are not to take the Lord's name in vain. And I know that we all shudder when we hear people just so flippantly use our God, our love, His name in vain. Observing the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We are so glad that you think so much of the Lord that that first day of the week you are worshiping the Lord your God. That is one of the highest occupations of a Christian is to worship the Lord your God. To honor your father and your mother. The prohibition of murder. Not to commit adultery. Not to steal. Not to lie. Not to be envious or covetousness. Consider the extent to which American society has decided to abandon these principles in favor of selfishness and also their own gratification. Marriage is no longer a primary place of our society, a sacred thing, as it once was. Infidelity is so common. While the divorce rate in the U.S. just skyrocketed in the 80s, and it's down a little bit, but there's probably some reasons for that, that uh, nearly all marriages today, 50% end up in divorce. And for the decline, it can be attributed to few Americans that are not uh, married at all or just living together. Society suffers greatly without a culture of strong marriages, families, and children um, are usually paying the highest price for our kind of a marriage is no big deal anymore. The children pay the most. Here's a statistic. Almost 25% of all children in America grow up in a single parent home. And it um, is usually the father is the one who is absent. A shocking figure released by the U.S. Census in 2015 showed that a fully 54% of teens ages 15 through 17 has grown up in broken families where parents have either neither married or have been divorced. Research shows that children from broken homes, now get these stats, the children that come from broken homes are first of all, are not going to achieve academically the way that they should achieve. They will not probably or less likely to attend college. They will experience financial mobility. They are more likely to suffer emotional or psychological illness, including depression and uh, even suicide. Also, children are more likely to engage in risky destruction of their lives through drug use, through sexual promiscuity, and also crime. There are exceptions, and we praise the Lord for ex those exceptions, but do you see why the Lord wants us to follow the Ten Commandments? All these stats that we have that people, that children suffer so much would not happen if we would follow the Ten Commandments like they're supposed to be, obey. But almost every conceivable metric success in life is more difficult for these children that come from single parent homes or broken homes. So much of this can be laid at the feet of the sexual revolution which sought to separate several sexual behavior from marriage. When sex is reconstituted re as primarily for entertainment or personal gratification. And many times the children who are conceived outside of marriage often are considered unwanted. The pill and other forms of contraceptives were supposed to usher in an era of free sex. 
you remember that statement and uh, by many people, precepts. But contraceptives often fail or simply not used. Thus, abortion on demand becomes a fallback. The Israelites of the Old Testament would have been familiar with the god Molech. According to historians, infants were sacrificed by dumping them into the belly of the state of the pagan deity in which the babies burned and consumed. Now, we think this is so terrible, but we have our own children sacrificed today, don't we? Do you have any idea how many children have been killed by the deciding of Roe versus Wade since 1973? Now get this staggering statistic of how many children have been aborted. We're talking 60 million. 60 million children that could have grown up to be contributing adults to society, but 60 million have been cut off by abortion. It's not only in the matter of sex and marriage and family where society has chosen to deviate from the wisdom of God's laws and the Ten Commandments. We are reaping destructive consequences from omitting the Ten Commandments in cities and states across the country. Laws have been changed that fail to punish criminals. Therefore, we as a law-abiding citizens do not have that protection of being free from criminals. Let me give you an example. In California, for example, thieves can steal up to $950 of property without being charged with a felony. Now, isn't that sad? It means that you, they can almost steal $1,000 and be okay. <laughs> and could you imagine having a business that, uh, you know, where criminals were allowed to come in and take a thousand, almost $1,000 from your establishment? You can see why so many businesses fail with those kind of laws. That has become so rapid in Los Angeles and San Francisco. New York has changed the law in 2020 to eliminate cash bail. In other words, criminals are arrested and then released immediately the day after they're arrested and charged. Hundreds or thousands of crimes have been committed by the release of repeated offenders. Now let me give you an example which Ron and Nancy are very aware of. In Wabasha, Wisconsin, last December, Daryl Brooks Jr. drove his SUV into a Christmas parade, killing six people and injuring dozens more. You remember it well. Fortunately, Ron and Nancy's grandchildren, I don't even think witnessed that, and I'm so glad that they didn't have to witness that. Daryl Brooks Jr., let's look at his history. He had been released on, a, on 1,000 bail just three weeks prior, despite a record offenses in three different states. This all happened after he ran over his girlfriend with his car. But that was okay, we released this guy. And six people have been killed because of releasing and thinking it's no big deal to commit offenses against the Ten Commandments. One would think that maybe we would wise up we are, what we're doing to ourselves, our children, our families, and our communities. Yes, we need to return to the Ten Commandments, which are God's laws and we need to do it quickly before it's too late. Ben Shapiro, I think you all know Ben Shapiro. He has an article in the uh, Times Republican quite often. He's been on TV, very young man, but a very wise, wise commentator. He said this, that we need the Ten Commandments. He said our world's attempting to take God out of our society. But God said, I am the God who brought you out of Egypt so that you may, they may worship you. 
And he went on to say that uh, God is a powerful God. And he went on to say, yes, God is the one who makes the rules. While our government is saying, we are placing God's rules with our rules. And how sad that is that the government thinks that they can change God's laws. And we are suffering because of it. And I gave you quite a few examples of how our nation has suffered because we no longer pay attention anymore to the Ten Commandments. <coughs> David Jeremiah has said, remember when you first drew pictures on an etch a sketch How many had etch a sketch Okay, now, you, if you made a mistake, you just shook it, and you have a clean slate. <coughs> Today our society is treating God's commandments as if it were written on etch a sketch But that's not the way it is. God's laws were written with his own hand in stone that cannot be removed. They will stay forever, and they better stay forever, or else we will not have a society. A.W. Tozar gives the definition of a real Christian who understands the Ten Commandments and what they are really all about. This is what he said. A real Christian is an odd number. Anyway, he has supreme love for one he has never seen, talks familiarly with every day to someone he cannot see, he expects to go to heaven on the virtue of another, he empties himself in order to be full, <coughs> admits he is wrong so he can be declared right, he goes on in order to get up, he is the strongest or she is the strongest, when uh, he is the weakest. He is the richest when he is the poorest. He is the happiest when he feels the worst. He dies that so that he can live. He forsakes in order to have, gives away so that he can keep, sees the invisible, hears the invisible, and knows this invisible passes knowledge. I can't think of a better knowledge that we can have than the Ten Commandments if we follow them. I like this old story at the end about the importance of keeping the Ten Commandments. Mark Twain told of a ruthless, arrogant, but religious businessman. And this is what the businessman said. Before I die, I intend to travel to the Holy Land, climb on Mount Sinai, and read the Ten Commandments for myself. Mark Twain says, I have a better idea. Why don't you just stay here and keep the Ten Commandments? I like that. Yes, we need to get back to God's laws. They are our salvation for the United States. They are the salvation for our world. Let us keep proclaiming those Ten Commandments to our children, to our grandchildren, and anyone that we come in contact with how wise and important God's laws are still today in America. Let's pray.